Hello, my name is Katie Matsky, and today I'm going to talk to you about Rosalind Franklin, a female geneticist who helped with our current understanding of DNA. I will go over her early life, relationships she had in the science field, her research, and the impacts of her findings on the field of genetics. So let's start with her early life. Rosalind was born in Notting Hill, London in 1920. Rosalind was born into a wealthy family, and her mother was the daughter of a lawyer, and her father was an investment banker. Rosalind's parents were caring. Her mother did charitable work helping unmarried mothers, and her father was a part-time professor at London Working Men's College, teaching electricity and magnetism to underprivileged men. They also took in two Jewish children fleeing the Nazi regime. Rosalind's parents extended this open and caring philosophy to their children, supporting them in whatever endeavors they sought. Her parents encouraged her to follow her ambitions in the science field, even though that was not a traditional career path for women at the time. The Franklin family's social connection and wealth also fostered Rosalind's education and success in the science field. She was educated in private schools where she was identified as highly intellectual, starting high school at just age 11. Rosalind set off to University of Cambridge at 18, eventually earning a PhD for her thesis on coal. Franklin's discoveries on coal were valuable to the war efforts. She continued her work on coal with mentor Jacques Mering. Franklin's time spent with Mering in the French government's central laboratory proved to be influential in her career. Here she worked well with fellow scientists and learned how to use X-ray diffraction on coal, a technique that would prove critical in her later work. Rosalind left the French lab in 1951 to study DNA at King's College in London. Here she was supervised by John Randall and did so well that she was told to take over fellow scientist Maurice Wilkins' work on DNA without Wilkins' knowledge. This misunderstanding between the two led to a hostile work environment. Wilkins just thought Franklin was trying to budge in on his work, and Franklin thought he was just being a terrible co-worker because of his attitude towards her. Later, two scientists, James Watson and Francis Crick, visited the King's College lab and were introduced to Rosalind by means of one of her presentations on DNA. They later invited researchers there to join in on their work, which Wilkins obliged. Wilkins later found Rosalind's groundbreaking Photo 51 in her notes and showed it to Watkins and Crick in the competing lab because he appreciated the work despite the tension between the two and thought her findings were eye-opening. So what was Photo 51? Photo 51 was the result of Rosalind's years of work in X-ray crystallography and tweaking in the method, revolutionizing the technique to finally get a clear photo of the structure of DNA. This image told Rosalind a lot about DNA. From the lighter appearance of the pizza slice shapes on the top and bottom of the inner circle, Franklin concluded that DNA bases are on the inside of the helix, while the phosphate groups are on the outside. Perhaps most importantly, the photo showed the double helical structure of DNA. We see here in Rosalind's notes that she did propose a double helix structure of DNA, after concluding that a triple helix was highly improbable. Rosalind's scientific discoveries go beyond this one photo. She also discovered that there are two different forms of DNA, A and B, and accurately proposed ways that the bases and the phosphate backbone are aligned in a DNA molecule. Rosalind's research on coal also revealed more about the properties of coal, particularly its porosity and function as a molecular sieve, which can be used for filtration. Lastly, Rosalind's research on the tomato mosaic virus yielded useful information. She again used her skills in X-ray crystallography to discover that the tomato mosaic virus consists of a single molecule of RNA surrounded by a helical array of protein molecules. Back to her crowning achievement, Photo 51, Watkins and Crick used the knowledge gained from this photo to advance their own research, winning a Nobel Prize, but never crediting Rosalind for her work. Although she wasn't recognized for her work at the time with the misogyny in the workplace, today we are able to see how influential she was as a woman in science, who contributed a great deal to our understanding of DNA. Rosalind helped lay the foundation of our current understanding of DNA, which is essential to all genetics research. Without understanding the basics of genetics, like the structure and properties of DNA, we could not move forward in a productive way. Rosalind died at the young age of 38 of ovarian cancer. This most likely was brought on by the fact that she was very exposed to x-rays. She never married, but is suspected to have been in love with her mentor, Jacques Morin. Thank you for joining me on a trip through the life, trials, and achievements of Rosalind Franklin. Here are my sources.